Top Keys. Hello and welcome to Top Cheese Gaming. Uh, I'm Mike, and with me is Steve. Hello. Welcome aboard, man. And thank you guys for joining us. Today we got a Let's Play that we're getting started of Metal Gear Solid 3. Subsistence. Disc 1, Subsistence. So this is a two-disc uh, game, and... Uh... We have uh, this disc in is just the main part of the game. Disc two has a few other little options like the snake versus monkey, the secret theater, and uh, Metal Gear one and Metal Gear two, which were the eight bit games back in the eighties. Oh, awesome. right on. So maybe one day we'll play those ones, but for today, it's just going to be this one. We got about eight hours of cutscenes to get watching, so let's get <laughs> this sucker rolling. All right, get this party started. We're going to do a new game here, and we're going to go MGS2 for the fun skin, and normal. There we go. And we are off on an adventure with snakes and stuff. Yeah. We're going to be uh, flying here through space and time. Probably break the speed of sound at least four or five times. <laughs> Actually, during his Halo jump, he does almost get close to Mach 1. Oh, that's awesome. Actually, I don't think so. He gets ripped to shreds. I mean, the only person <laughs> in the world who could pull that one off is Felix Potvin. And he had this giant fancy suit that he was jumping in. Oh, oh right, right. Um, the, the weather balloon guy. I thought, his like name was, I thought his name was Felix Baumgartner. No. Oh, okay. And right here, we have the C-130. Yep, 130. Yep, and um, this is not the C-130. No, this is the C-130. Oh, okay. Like, quite literally, it's um, a one, just a regular one, mm -hmm. a picture of a uh, sequoia tree, <laughs> and a zero spelled out. Zero, oh, okay. It's a special designation because this plane on takeoff will break the speed of sound. Really? At least twice. Twice? Twice. Wow. Yeah, they decide to pull off pull up so they slow down slightly and then they hit the jet boosters and off they go breaking it the second time uh, that sounds about right i mean if you noticed uh, part of the architecture is that wire going back to the tail section right there's two of them mm -hmm. and that's to improve stability so the plane doesn't shear off in half <laughs> these wires are actually made out of uh wolverine skeleton they melted <laughs> wolverine it down skeleton and uh, i mean yeah i mean this thing's almost indestructible uh you yeah, know that makes a lot of sense for the 60s yeah <laughs> well no i mean uh this is like top secret stuff right here oh so yeah yeah right. us lowly peons we've never heard of this kind of technology <laughs> us lowly peons <laughs> this guy's a bit of a dick yeah he calls him a panty waist i mean that's panty just waist. what a dick move i mean i know he looks pretty fucking uh 10 minutes to drop off. i don't know pretty a little bit. I mean, he does have a cigar, though, so that gives him bonus points. Yeah, I mean, and it's a Cuban, too. I mean, yeah. look at that star right there. That's how you know. Mm. That's how you know. I've actually never tried a Cuban. I've, I've been wanting to, but from what I hear about people who have gone down to Mexico or wherever they can actually get a hold of these things, mm -hmm. uh, they're not really all that good. The hype's not all... Really? Like, they don't uh, live up to the hype from what I've been told. That's just... Uh, that's such a downer. I've always wanted them, too. And homeboy's jacking into the Matrix. Yeah, right? Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Boom. I mean, for the 90s or whenever this one came out, those were pretty <laughs> sweet graphics. You can see a little bit of a reflection, but there is absolutely no <laughs> detail whatsoever. Even though, so, it really, it's just clouds in the sun. <laughs> I believe this game came out in 2005. Yeah, close enough. <laughs> no, it's not. Not even close. You'll be falling at 130 miles per hour. Oh, 130 miles per hour. That's almost the speed of sound, right? Ah, it's close. Oh, okay. <laughs> I believe in the second part when he's in that drone is, oh, is where he gets close to the speed of sound. I mean, honestly, or, at 130 miles an hour, he's like right there. Yeah, he's got to right be really close. I mean, I think it's like 131.2 miles an hour. Yeah, that sounds about right. Uh, so I've been told. I break it frequently <laughs> driving to and from work. Yeah, right. <laughs> Master Chief, is that you? <laughs> it's a halo jump. I know. Is he falling from space then? Yeah, I mean... All the way to the Earth? That's Sergeant Johnson with white face on right there. <laughs> wow. That's okay to say. I mean, it's, I'm is it? White face. Is on. it, though? Come on, man. I don't think it is. No. <laughs> I mean, white, white anything, cracker, whatever, you're good. <laughs> oh, my God. 
<laughs> I mean, just just saying this from my just thoughts. If I was trying to do that, I'd probably already thrown up by now. Oh yeah. That many spins in the air. <laughs> There's just no way I could handle that. I mean, actually, it's an ancient Navy SEAL technique. They were doing this back in ancient Greece. The, uh, <laughs> when, the they, when the Navy SEALs were formed? Yes. By uh, <laughs> Apollo himself. <laughs> son of Zeus. <laughs> and uh, Gimli the Dwarf. And Gimli the Dwarf. But, um, yeah, no, no. So what they do is they jump out. They do a couple front flips. Some of them who are more advanced will actually do one front flip to one back flip in that ratio. <laughs> and it helps them reach terminal velocity that much quicker. Like three times the normal speed. So exactly I feel like that shouldn't, though. It does. Okay. Well, There's a reason it's in a video game, because obviously it's got to be realistic. It's got to be real if it's in a video game. Oh, yeah. Not to mention there's you know people with superpowers I mean, just, in here. Just try Googling it, okay? <laughs> if, it's, if it pulls up on Google, obviously it's true. If it's if it's on Google, it's true. <laughs> I have one million articles that say they don't, and one article that says they do. I knew it. <laughs> <laughs> and here, I mean, this guy looks like Herr um, Eichmann or something. <laughs> He's not German. He's I mean, Russian. Everyone with a monocle is German. Okay. The Earth was blue. Either that or they're fancy and they go to the uh, the old opera. So what you're saying is Mr. Monopoly is uh, German. He is. Oh, okay. Yeah. That makes sense now. That last name is very German name. <laughs> Monopoly. Monopoly. Yeah. <laughs> so what they're talking about right now is that this guy is a famous scientist who was um, helped build the rockets that helped push the Russians into the space race. And then... That's quite a After he so why do you was successful from that, he moved into weapons manufacturing and, and or design, really. And, uh, that, and now, basically, they're trying to save him exactly from Russia, or trying to get him out of Russia to be because of the weapon he's made has scared him so badly that he fears for all humankind. So uh, okay. Yeah, so that's, that's like a synopsis of this part. I mean, in all honesty, I mean, we're going to be here for another, like, five minutes just for this one part. Then <laughs> what? So it's like a, a Ned Stark kind of um, change of opinion on things, right? So he's, he's sitting there making all these fancy weapons, showing them off to all his buddies. He gets captured and sees the realities of what his stuff's causing. And then, I mean, naturally he goes, runs away in an Iron Man suit, runs into some White Walkers in the forest. Right. (laughs) And then they cut his head off. Are you talking about Tony Stark? That's his cousin. Oh, He took over the family business. Got it. Ned Stark got his head lopped off. (laughs) Um, Actually, I think they're related to the Kennedys, if I'm not mistaken. (laughs) Everybody's related to the Kennedys. Oh, I'm I'm sure. (laughs) Um... But yeah, so one one thing about Metal Gear for for people that don't know Metal Gear, uh, this is a very chatty game. Uh, it's about eighty percent cutscenes, twenty percent gameplay. And it, you know, if I can't stress this enough, and I probably will be talking about this more and more over the course of this game, is if you don't like that style of gameplay, this is not the game for you. But, I mean, so that also makes the gameplay a lot easier for you because there's not but so much... Oh, there's nothing to do. So, I mean, that that's why it's perfect for you, Steve. Mm-hmm. You mean the one where I mean, the it's, it's one thing... In a, I mean, being crippled by using the PlayStation no. controller <laughs> is one thing, but then you add on top of it an easy game because you play maybe five minutes out of eight hours. Yeah, right. <laughs> but, I mean, also, obviously, I mean... I'm all for what these guys did, though. I'm all about a good storyline in a game. Yeah, I mean, that's... A lot of backstory. Like You don't play Metal Gear... Metal Gear anything for the game. You play it for the story. Yeah. So it's almost like you're watching a movie. Mm-hmm. Albeit they're really chatty with each other. Well, that's part of the movie. And, I mean, the one thing I never got was the little cell phone he has or whatever it is. The codec. The codec. It's not a cell phone. In the middle of a fight or something, and it starts ringing. <laughs> Everyone just stops Everybody stops. Absolutely, yeah. They don't They don't know what's going on there. All of a sudden, it's like, you know, uh, the guards all go, wait, what's he doing? And then they're like, oh, he's on his codec. So they're like, oh, I guess we have to wait. 
<laughs> I mean, I, I think that's written into their union contract. <laughs> their union. Um, it's actually the boss who's hitting these things and organizing when they're going to happen. A month ago. So <laughs> they get their five-minute break. Uh, they usually will smoke, sometimes shoot tobacco. <laughs> and very rarely, they, I mean, some of them will whip out a bond. But, I mean, that's that's my preferred method of relaxation. I mean, it's just Code the call. ultimate. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, if you've never tried it, I recommend you pick up one of these things. Well, yeah, in this game, it's actually spa. In this one, it's actually his uh, radio. He actually has because this is this is the 1960s. There's no such thing as a codec yet, so he literally has a radio. So every now and again, during certain cutscenes, you'll actually see him flick the switch on his radio to turn it on. Ah, uh, okay. So in the later games, it becomes his quote unquote codec, which is something completely different. I don't understand how it works. To be completely honest. Other than the way he hears is by literally stimulating the small bones of his ear. Oh. But that's it. That's the only thing I know. Like in the in the second one, they they keep talking about how you know using nanocommunication, which is using the codec, is silent con uh, conversation or communication. It's like how the fuck is that a thing, or how does it even work? Well, I mean, I can, I can see the whole theory behind how so he can hear them, but the whole thing about how they can hear him... Yeah, that's what I mean. ...is just really... I, I don't understand. Like, if he is he talking? If he is, I mean, that's quite the voice he's got. I mean, he's got a sweet set of pipes. Yeah, right? Unless there's a small microphone embedded in his freaking, like, vocal cords or something. I mean, but even then, it'd still be pretty loud. You're making some kind of noise and if they're standing right over you and this thing goes off, <laughs> yeah. it's game over. Yeah, game over, bro. Oof. There we go. It's super effective. <laughs> it's super effective. Listen, oh, sky attack! Oh. So, here's like... One of the five minutes that you can actually control. Yeah, that's that, and that was it. It's over. Game over. So <laughs> Thank you for playing. Yeah. You we'll bore witness to the world's first the Halo jump. Ticking. Yep. Well, it's still kind of going. <laughs> Pulls the shoot. There we go. Fantastic. Yay. And happy landing. We're All getting around. close. Rescue, We're getting very close. Hey, look, it's, it's got a fox. I'm going to drop back down, though. Helium I'm looking. Into the balloon to inflate it. See, Mega he was fox. looking up. Yeah. Minutes. So random. Once it's complete, the gunship's arm will latch They're going to start bombing them here the pretty soon. It'll be like um, right before D-Day the happened. They are just bombing Negative. the crap out of the coast. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't hit a thing. Because they just kind of... Bomb the wrong beach <laughs> because of the weather. <laughs> the and next thing you know, he's walking into an ambush because, oh, listen to all these bombs. Something's going to happen so over there. And sure enough, we got the silver fox jumping in from the uh, rafters. The silver fox. I have no idea what you're talking about. Sounds like she could hold her own against a battalion of tanks. The silver fox. Because of his hair, man. Oh, okay. It's quite the luxurious mane this guy's got going on. Gotcha. But also, um, uh, what was that movie? The Court Jester? I forget who was in it. It was it was one of those weird, bizarre movies watched when I was growing up. Okay. Like that one of the main protagonists was the Gray Fox. Oh. And it's sort of like a Robin Hood type of character, but I, I don't know. Did he have a sword? He did. Oh, nice. A couple swords. Well, he had Gray one... Fox is actually a character from Metal Gear 1. Metal Gear Solid 1. Oh, right on. Yeah. He's actually um, Frank Yeager and his whole com convoluted backstory with him. But, yeah, he's pretty cool. He's a ninja. Nice. Pretty awesome. I mean, he had one sword that he fought with, one sword that he carried with him at all times. Mm-hmm. And then that was it. But on a side note, real quick, how the hell do you lose your backpack like that? It just makes no sense. I mean, whatsoever. It, it's the '60s. It's they <laughs> the haven't 60s. they haven't invented synthetic fabrics yet that are indestructible. <laughs> I mean, yeah, they got Wolverine's bones making up that airplane skeleton. Right. Yeah, the Wolverine's bones in the airplane. They, they couldn't splurge an extra forty bucks for a good set of straps on his backpack. <laughs> That looks very uncomfortable, that harness that he's got on. Yeah, right? Right in the crotchial area. That's the uh, G-string. Well, that's the Fulton recovery harness. It's the summer model. Summer model. Look at that. Yeah. White hair. 
Sparkle, sparkle. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, it's Raiden. Look at that guy. I mean, Jack. I picked this on purpose just because I did this as a child, and I didn't realize, like, that this game was going to do that to me. Because uh, I thought, after playing Metal Gear Solid 2, that we were done playing as Raiden, and I was like, oh, okay, cool, it's going to be Snake again. And uh, I got I got this scene, and it even says Jack up in the corner. And uh, I'm like, oh, that's Raiden. Like, that's not that's not who I want to play as. I want to play a snake. And I was just like, this isn't this isn't working. Like, this doesn't do it for me. Like, why am I stuck as Raiden? And uh, so I'm just glad that this is about to happen. So I'm like, yes. Somebody might be listening. Yeah. They they cheesed you pretty good. Yeah, they cheesed everybody pretty good. If you if you picked this one thing, the rest of them is all the normal guy. Yeah, it's all the normal guy. It's all regular snake at that point. But uh, yeah, if you pick. If you pick I like MGS2, you get treated with this one. And it was like, dude, what the hell, man? Like, why would you do that? <laughs> because a lot of people were really pissed off about Metal Gear Solid 2 because all the trailers that they showed before the game was released was you playing a snake the whole time. And after the first chapter, they switched you out to this guy, Raiden, and you were stuck as him the rest of the game. He was a different guy. He had different moves. Everything. Right. Different no. backstory. Don't it was insane. Oh, fast. Yeah, exactly. Well, it, was, it was a giant, you know, F you to the community. And like, hey, mm -hmm. like you're now you're getting this guy. And it, it reminds me of the one thing similar to that that pissed me off. What um, was that? Playing Assassin's Creed 3 was one of my favorite games mm -hmm. on the uh, 360, right? Okay. Um, but you beat the game or you get close to the end of the game. Mm -hmm. And... The character you're playing as is a Native American mixed with a white guy who came from Europe and slept with your mom, right? <laughs> okay. So he's really digging up on his Native American history, or not history, heritage. Uh huh. And he goes and gets the mohawk going on and everything. Mm -hmm. And it sucks because you go around the whole game with your hood on, which to me is the best part of the Assassin's Creed games. Yeah. And all of a sudden, you're walking around no hood whatsoever, and you've got this mohawk, which I'm not saying anything bad about mohawks, <laughs> but it's not something I want to stare at while I'm trying to beat the last couple hours of a game. Yeah. Can you but thankfully, they patched it this is um, sometime later, waiting. so you, you'd this roll around with the mohawk only when you're in your little home village area. The mm -hmm. and then once you go out into the real world, it, you kind of actually so make steps to hide your identity. Kind of oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> so you actually have the hood back up, which was awesome. Okay, well, that's I, I can, nice. I can, I'll take that compromise. But Well, Metal Gear Solid 4 actually pays a little homage to Assassin's Creed. Right. Oh, yeah? Your outfit to start the game is the hood and everything. Really? Mm -hmm. Okay. No. Oh, a snake. Reason. A snake. Oh, I'm a snake. The gotcha. sneaky, slithery snake. I kept you waiting, huh? How exactly am I supposed Watch me to crawl through the foliage and shrubbery. A knife and a tranquilizer gun. Woo! Use them to hunt also, food. Major, also when I come back, I want a shrubbery. <laughs> yeah, Can't be too big, though. Backpack. Not too expensive. I lost my backpack on the way down here. Oops! <laughs> Damn it, I knew <laughs> we shouldn't have got it from Walmart. <laughs> Walmart. <laughs> You know where it is? It was probably Kmart back then. No problem. That's true. <laughs> yeah. It's stuck Maybe, uh, do they sell, I mean, it's the 60s and he's supposed to be some yeah, higher tech please. guy than the normal the grunts that are roaming around in the woods, right? Action. Yeah, exactly. So I'm sure they splurged slightly well, and he got a backpack from Circuit City. Oh, Circuit City. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Along with his, uh, cordless cell phone. Yeah. Or cordless phone. And his Walkman. And his Walkman. <laughs> Dude, Walkman's were the shit, man. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I had the sweetest mixtape set. To me, send <laughs> yeah, what well, was on it? One for each mood. Okay, one for each mood? Back. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. At one point, I think this was when it switched to CDs, actually. I had um, a lot of uh, Limp Biscuit on it. Ah, uh, Limp Biscuit. That's always a good one. And Smash Mouth. Yeah, that is... <laughs> Smash Mouth, huh? It was those two, and then finally System of a Down came around. System of a Down. And my eyes were open. And your eyes were opened. Nice. Yep. All right, so there's my backpack. Oop, there it is, up there. Ooh, up in the tree. Let's go ahead and get up there. Oh, you son of a bitch. There we go. I mean, I, I can see the design to imply that, yeah, there's vines and stuff you can grab onto, but they don't really poke out and create any real handholds. No, not really. I mean, they're just vines, so... 
So, yeah. So, before this call starts, I think we're going to go ahead and wrap this one up. And we'll see you guys on the next one. All righty. See you then. Thanks for joining us.